Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here. I'm doing a quick little uh little gun emporium sort of thing. So this is the second episode of the Good Sir Knight Show. Uh, unfortunately I'm not in uniform and yeah, I've got somewhere to be in uh 15 minutes and I gotta go get a fancier dress shirt. So I have a job interview tomorrow at the Moon Hotel down by Round One in Convention City. Pretty cool place. Apparently the uh the owner it seems like he's half Japanese, half American, or something around those lines. Don't know yet. We'll find out tomorrow. So in the meantime, I just wanted to go through some of uh, guns and stuff. I recently bought a SR-16 made by VFC off of Gojira, who should be playing the next weekend it's not raining. And it has a few modifications done to it. So, notably, the, um, the front flip-up sight, which you would normally use that comes with a gun, was busted one day. Don't know how that happened. Weird, but so there's a uh, more standard mul uh, rail picantony pic rail attachment here, as well as a rear sight here. The original flip up sort of like scar rear sight is removed and uh, unaccounted for. So that's the uh, first two main modifications. The cool little thing is it can use these uh, swivel sing swing adapter AR mount thingies. So these just mount to do their, these little pivots, these little uh, recesses like here. As you can see on the back, they have one back here near the stock, one in the middle of the rail, and one in the front of the rail. So you have some options. I've got two mounted in here because I've got a special sort of two-point sling on the way, which I'm excited to use now. The gun is relatively heavy and mostly metal, and that is not helped by the addition of a GNP uh, M203. So yeah, this is, um, this is a surprisingly heavy gun. This is actually heavier than my MP5. But it's got a grenade launcher, and... The accuracy is impressive, the iron sights are incredibly easy to use, so no need for an optic here, and wait, grenade launcher I mean. Also the full auto is beastly, it's um, it's on par with the uh, nail driver that uh, the good old Riker slash Redbeard had. Also I made a little patch modification onto the stock, as Cowboy Bebop is not simply an anime but an essential passage into adulthood. It's something you gotta see. Like, even if you despise anime with a passion, Cowboy Bebop is such an experience you gotta watch anyway. So, fun grenade launcher, despite being... I actually kinda like the way, because it means I have to train harder and get more exercise to use it efficiently, so... Oh! The mod I did talk about that should be the most obvious is that this is a short MP5 mag. There is a Angel's Customs conversion kit in here. We uh, sanded it down just a bit so it'll fit, and um, apparently not enough because I can't get it out and it's putting a bit of a, see it's putting a bit of pressure on the magazine wall here. So that's there, and I got the small stick mag in here. There's uh, the longer MP5 mags, because I don't really want to modify my kit and this feeds just fine. So fantastic, pretty awesome. Whew, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, I actually really like the stock. It's pretty comfy, it fits on really well. And instead of having the middle pull tab like uh, Fox's gun does that we'll get to in a second, this one you can just pull right on here and it'll come right out, so. Options pretty gnarly. I'm actually really excited to use this. Right now I have a little single shell grenade, so this fires this cap here. Yeah, like that. And it's a lot of fun to use, especially if you want to play like gas propelled vol uh, dodgeball rules. So, probably won't be using it on the field because enough grenades get lost at uh, 10 gun Sergeant 58. But, cool little things. I'm actually really excited about this. This is uh, pretty big. Now, you might be wondering, why buy that over the MP5? Well, the MP5 SD is fantastic. I absolutely love this gun. However, I have encountered a small problem. Now, other than the fact that the blowback sufficiently, significantly slows down the cyclic rate of fire, my problem, even after having John and Son do some work with it, is the selector switch. Now, if you if you look closely, it's not very crisp and clean. It's very the little indents that the ball bearings and everything roll into, and the spring itself is all sort of beat up, and it's really it's taken a beating. It's the moral of the story. Now, Tokyo Motori has their own MP5 and stuff, and it it works far more cleaner and everything. But yeah, this one is just uh. It, it's SEMA. I mean, they're about the same price, but apparently the Motori one 
despite being a lot lighter, has a better better body build and it will uh, not be falling apart like this one is, unfortunately. So this one's actually had the issue where you set it to semi and it nudges slightly. So it's semi, but it's actually set to safe. So you're waiting for someone. I know I'm using this as a two point, don't judge me. So you could be waiting for someone you go, okay, Overwatch, and you go to pull the trigger and nothing happens. So then you point down, you switch it to full auto, back to safe, and back to semi, shoot in the ground twice, ah, they're behind the bunker. So, too late for that. I do like this sling, by the way. I think it's made by, uh, who makes this sling? I know I bought it because it's fancy online. I think it's Spec Ops? The quick detachment? Anyway, it's a really cool sling. I like it a lot. But yeah, as much as I like my MP5, I think with VFC being a better company than SEMA. Uh, I'm probably going to have to swap over. I was just starting to get a little shaky, but... Yeah, I mean, let, to be fair, airsoft guns aren't built to the durability I would prefer. So this one tends to get beat up and busted. It's inevitable, it's going to happen at some point. I don't know what it'll do with it then, but... This one's probably going to go on the back shelf for a while, just because, uh... I guess it's... It's a lot lighter than the other one, because I can one-hand it longer and more efficiently, but... Eh, I don't know. I like it, but it's, it's going to be on break for a while. So there's that. Now moving on, we have the Fox Gun that my good buddy in the first episode of this show was on. And his is a APS Concepts. Yeah, APS Concepts right there. So we got the warning tape. He hasn't peeled that off. He's got the simple uh, mag full stock. And this really, uh, this really abrasive sandpaper grip so that you will not lose hold of the gun, and the gun will physically hurt you for touching it. So, this is actually mostly metal too. This is a hefty gun. Honestly, I don't know if he could put a, uh, I guess he could put a grenade launcher on it if he wanted to, but it's uh, it's got some weight to it, so it's gonna be a little front heavy. I mean, it'll work. I don't, know, I don't know if he wants to use his front grip above all else or anything. Comfy gun, also. The pistol sights will flip up in much of a, uh, MP7 format, and it's got a, what I like about it, it's the green filament here. Apparently, this filament isn't terribly difficult to get a hold of Nevike, so you can get a hold of these, and the filaments generally come in red, reddish, orange, and green. So, maybe for uh, more night-orientated operations things, I might get the green stuff. I like green. Best color ever, so. And debatable, too. You, you can't debate that green's the best color in the world. It's just like an accepted known fact. So yeah, his gun's pretty cool. His actually has a electric blowback, and it says... Actually, I'm trying to read through the camera. Have a nice day. I don't look at this often. Don't judge me. His doesn't have the uh, modifier to it, so his actually uh, uses M4 mags. Fun stuff. Now here's the main thing that I'm really fixated on. Because right here on the selector switch, nice and clean selection. This is one of my favorite things in the world when a selector switch works well. So, I actually got a jelly. The one on the uh, SR16 is pretty good. It's not on that part, it's not on that level. It's a quieter click. Takes a bit more work, but I mean, it works, it gets the job done. I would prefer it to work more like the Fox gun, but eh, what are you gonna do? Oh, uh, I have the. I haven't used this in forever, MP7. With the little sound talk. It's gas blowback. It's fa it's a fantastic gun. It's made by Tokyo Mudry, by the way. And check out this selector right here. I'm really big on this. Click, 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 click. Mmm, I love that. And being gas blowback, once you rack it, if there's nothing in there, I'll lock back. And you got your bolt, bolt catch release and all that. So it's a great, fantastic little gun. Again, flip up sights. Although mine doesn't have the green, I would probably jack one of those like Fox has on his if I was going to use this more often. Now the downside I had with this was bullet speed. You fire it, it goes pop, 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 nice and loud, but the BBs just kind of like float towards the target. So they'll see that, they'll hear you shooting, see you, return fire real quick, their BBs will generally hit you somewhere, and they still have time to duck out of the way of your BBs. So. That's really the only reason I've been using this. Also, this magazine is hefty and only holds 40 BBs, so you're gonna need a few of them and be very sparse with your shots. So, risk reward sort of thing. The kick is fantastic, though. 
I will say that much. As long as the weather is nice and hot, like it is now, the kick is positively fantastic. You get some power to that BB. So this is cool, and you can take it apart, clean, and all that. It's a pretty gnarly. Uh, what else do we got here? Ah, yes. So with VFC, also KSC, or as you might know, this is the gas blowback scorpion that came out with not too long ago. This was the f second gun I got after my AK. Went to Gas Blowback Land after uh, hanging out with uh, Redbeard a bit. And this is uh, still relatively expensive. I have like six long magazines and two short mags for this. I'm trying to actually sell it because I haven't used it in like a year and a half. And I think that's pretty much pushing us to the selling point. I mean, it's clean. Everything works. Put in fire. Crack the bowl. Let me actually sell the mag. Is there propane in here? We're about to find out the pro There's no BB, so... Okay, there's no propane. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool little gun, especially for a full-auto pistol. It does get front-heavy with the mags, and this doesn't do anything. It's... I... Czechoslovakia. I don't, I don't know. So... Yeah, this is a cool... It's a cool little gun. I like it. It's gnarly, but... Yeah, I'm gonna have to sell it anyway. As some of you might know, the wife's pregnant. She's on like her eighth month now. She's getting ready to pop out the kid, so... Maybe time to sell off some of the extras that I don't really need. That actually belong to me. I'm not selling Fox's guns, but... Yeah, I'm trying, I'll try to get rid of this one. See how that goes over, if anyone's interested. Uh, speaking of my first gun, the first gun I purchased was this, which is also a SEMA. This is a SEMA AK-47. Yeah, this is the uh, Kalishnikov Fancy Special Edition. This one wasn't at all expensive, and actually the only thing that's wrong with it is I took it apart one day. First mistake, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so I took it apart. Well, I had instructions online and stuff. And I basically managed to swap out the spring from the, uh, the gearbox, but the gears are all out of sync or out of timing or some esoteric terminology, so the, the gears basically just make a grinding noise and nothing actually gets fired out of it, so... It's been retired for the longest time. Um, so yeah, this doesn't this doesn't do anything. If I were to swap out the gearbox with a functioning one, this gun would once again live and be pretty fantastic for a small, stocky rifle. Surprisingly accurate too. I actually, use this a few, a few times. I use this in a ten uh, not ten gun at the Ukin V. Just done fantastic stuff. So I don't know. I might just. I could either get a new gearbox or I could just give it away. I'll probably think of something to do with it, so there's that. Uh, there is the... This is, like, this is, yeah, this is VFC. This is Fox's um 45 With full out stock. So this is a cool little gun. He's got the suppressor on it. The suppressor's quick release, so... If you're going around, and you're doing your sneaky sneakies, your stealthy operations, and you're like, Nyeh. What you do... She's like, hmm, I need to get around this corner, but this, this is at, like, rifle length right now. What will I do? Oh, I know. If I collapse the stock, it's gas blowback, by the way, which is fantastic. Collapse the stock, take the suppressor off, it's almost a pistol. And you get all up here and you go, me, pew, pew. It's probably going to kick you in the eye, but it's an option. It's something you can do. Now, the main problem is this magazine only holds, like, 25 BBs. It's massive. Holds a ton of gas though, it also takes forever to load. So yeah, this is pretty cool. This is a little Fox Blaster. I know he's been wanting to use this. He might just take this when they say go, just pop, 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 fire it off onto the air, and then grab his main rifle, so. This is pretty gnarly. And uh, ooh, actually, hold that thought, I have one more thing. Don't worry about that room. I've got the shotgun. This is my other primary gas weapon. As it can fire 326, it's small and compact. So you wrap around a corner and you just go blam! BBs everywhere. Fantastic gun for, especially for 10 gun, where the field's really short and most of the engagements are gonna be up close because eventually you do have to move towards the other team. I know it's, it's almost unheard of, but at some point you need to get up to move a bit. I mean, you can sit, it makes a fantastic small ambush gun too, but it is far more effective to just run up on them and be like, this is all that now. So, I also think it's pumpy. 
gas powered, so this, there's no spring. It's really easy to pump and all right, it's fantastic little gun M870 Reacher. And finalizing this list is the gun I recently got from Jahanansan, which is a Python 357. This one is a spring. It shoots over 25 feet and it's recommended for ages 10 and up. And I think most people are 10 and up nowadays. And this is pretty cool. I mean, it's terribly ineffective as a uh, weapon, but apparently there's going to be a few uh, games going down and stuff where, okay, that's all good, where they're going to be using uh, just spring guns. So, iPro, you're not going to have to risk losing a tooth. No one can make it too powerful because it's a spring. And you basically load the little BB in there in the 357 round, you put it in the chamber, you close it, and it'll go clicky, 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 unless you pull back on the hammer. And that'll power it up, and it'll shoot, and it goes, pow! Pretty cool. Fun to play with little uh, revolver reloads. I'm not a, the biggest revolver fan, but this is, uh, this is pretty gnarly. I'm actually enjoying this. Almost, I already almost broke it too, because when I took out the box, the, uh, Styrofoam was upside down and dropped to the floor, so good times. I crunched it all back together. See, the handle's not broken. Everything's fine. So, yeah, that will be episode, whatchamacallit, two of the Gears of Night Show. Now, my main format plan was to have at least one other person here with me and to be wearing airsoft gear, particularly wearing with the gear because it's been not only just super hot out, risking heat exhaustion and heat stroke, but it's also been raining a lot, so when it's raining, most people just don't even want to go outside. Even with all waterproof gear and gas guns, that rain is going to cause... Uh, what does it do? Uh, the sun comes out and all turns strained to humidity, or the rain is cold and your body heat's hot and you get fogged anyway, so... Unless you're wearing a mesh mask, which has the risk of bio BBs exploding in and taking out your eyeball, if you're wearing uh, glasses, the actual glass, they're going to fog up and you're going to be blind. You're going to be playing blind, but hey, best luck to you. It might work out playing blind. I mean, I've been, I've been blind most of my life. I don't want to hear it. It'll basically be like me playing without glasses and in a fog, but now everyone. So, super nearsighted blind kids convention, battle royale, deathmatch. It's not like anyone's ever shot their teammate before. Right, Chris? So, uh, so yeah, there's, uh, there's that, so I'm actually five minutes over time right now. I've got to run. I hope all of you have a chivalrous day, and I'll be back with episode three. Going to work on my other two videos I love to do, but episode three, hopefully I'll have Godzilla here with me. We could show off some fizz guns. We'll dress up a little fancy, maybe do some makeup, have a good time. So, yeah, cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous.